Elon Musk's brain implant company is called Neuralink, and it is a billionaire entrepreneur's entry point into the unproven medical area of brain-computer interface, also known as BCI. Throughout the six years since Neuralink was established, there has been significant development in the field of BCI. Some of it comes from Neuralink themselves, with their efforts implanting electronics into pigs and monkeys. One of those monkeys is now renowned for having the ability to play Pong utilizing only his thoughts, owing to the digital telepathy made possible by BCI technology. And now, for the very first time in the United States, the next generation of the brain-computer interface will be tested on humans in clinical trials. On the other hand, the FDA has said that Neuralink will not be the first BCI treatment to be granted approval. It's a piece of equipment from a rival private firm named Synchron that goes by the name Stentrode. Moreover, given the demographics of our typical online audience, I anticipate that some of you may find that information distressing. On the contrary, let me quickly rebut that by stating that this is a fantastic opportunity for essentially all people. Included businesses are Neuralink and Elon Musk because of the concept that genuine competition is the single most effective way to advance an industry. Invention in making new discoveries will speed up when there is intense competition and a wide range of items on the market. Welcome to the Technology Zone, where the home of technology resides. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the condition of BCI business in this current time and where Neuralink falls into the bigger picture. To begin, I'd like to provide some background information on Neuralink. So clearly, when Neuralink was first established in 2016, there was a great deal of hype and media exposure around the firm, and this was solely due to the guy who was behind the initiative, Elon Musk. The media was entirely on fire with stories about how Elon Musk was heading to implant devices in people's brains that might cure all diseases, make you more intelligent, allow you to control a computer with one's nervous system, and perhaps even interface with AI technology so that you could become a human-machine hybrid ultra-being. Everything was a touch excessive, but frankly, that's exactly how Elon does business. Because he does not have a filter, he just utters all of the ludicrous and spectacular ideas floating about in his head, and the media covers what he says. Consequently, Elon Musk was not the first person to develop a brain-computer interface. It has a history that spans an astonishingly long period of time. The main issue is that there has been almost no progress made toward refining the technique and application of BCI between the years 2016 and the 1990s. This is the only concern. Hence, this is where Neuralink comes into play. It is a fresh take on an established technology that does the very same objective that Tesla achieved for the automobile sector but in a more efficient manner. They did not come up with the idea for the electric automobile, but they arranged the technology behind it into a product that performed incredibly well and overcame an inherent issue in the design that had been used before. Now, what exactly is meant by the term brain-computer interface? The idea underlying the brain-computer interface may be summed up in a few short sentences. Your brain is basically just a mass of gooey electric flesh, and it exerts its influence over the other parts of your body by producing specific electrical signals, which it then sends through one's nerves and into one's muscles and organs. Your brain is responsible for practically all of your conscious experiences. Those electromagnetic pulses may be thought of as a human body's version of a programming language. Your brain always communicates with all the parts of your body through the spinal cord, but there are occasions when links between your brain and body are severed. This may happen as a result of physical damage or a degenerative illness. Therefore, the BCI may serve as a bridge for the electrical signals to use to get over the damaged link. The currently available BCI technology may be categorized in two distinct classes of thought, invasive and non-invasive. You have undoubtedly seen non-invasive brain-computer interfaces which look like strange headgear filled with a large number of electrode sensors. This can interpret the electrical impulses coming from the brain, although it does not perform very well. It should come as no surprise that it is not very successful, given that there is a complete skull separating the sensing devices and the neurons in the brain. It's the same as attempting to hear a musical from outside the venue where it's being held. You may be able to make out the beat of the bass notes, however, you won't be able to hear the voices. Therefore, in order to achieve a reliable connection to the brain, we would need to make our BCI more intrusive, which is where things start to get messy. The Utah RA is now considered to be the gold standard for intrusive BCI testing in the industry. It looks like a square computer chip with a lot of spikes sticking out of it in all areas. I'll tell you one prediction of where all those spikes are heading. And yeah, I guess you're guessing the same, into the brain. So what they do is cut off a section of the skull. 
pin the Utah RA into the outermost layer of the brain, and afterward, attach a little computer device straight onto the top of the brain. The computing device links to the ARI with one end and has a large cable going out the other end. In most cases, they will need to do this procedure twice, which means that you will end up with two spikes implanted in your brain and two computer devices with cables protruding from the top of your head. It's really cruel, but it gets the job done. The computer is able to read the spike's electrical impulses, which are subsequently converted into computer code. The tips can interpret the electrical signals coming from the cortical area of the brain very rapidly and effortlessly. As a result of this technique, a person who has received a brain implant is able to operate electronic equipment using just their thoughts. They have the ability to manipulate a robotic limb as if it were their own arm, as well as the capability of controlling a computer to maneuver a mouse or input on a keyboard. The fact that this technology can only be used in clinical research settings is one of the many drawbacks associated with it. When all of this comes pouring out of people's thoughts, it makes it impossible for them to live their lives normally. Even in their own houses, they are unable to keep up with this standard. Additionally, because the Utah RA is nothing more than a collection of small nails implanted on the brain surface, the body is likely to want to get rid of the foreign material. It is going to get inflamed and scar tissue is going to grow around the puncture, which is going to make the device ineffective finally. Let's move on to the next era of brain-computer interfaces. Hence, at this point, we have entered the subsequent generation of PCI technology, in which new companies like Syncon has been the first to achieve complete human testing, as mentioned in this video's beginning. They first conducted their experiments in Australia with a sample size of four patients, each of whom was given a BCI implant. It would seem that Australia has more lax laws regarding the substances that may be administered to people's brains. And only the year before, the Food and Drug Administration gave Syncron the go light to begin human trials in the United States. The first patient in the United States has just had its tentrode implanted and will be the first of six individuals to participate in the research project supported by the National Institutes of Health, costing $10 million. By analyzing the construction of Synchron's implant, we may better comprehend the factors that led to the company's achievement of the threshold first. Stents are a frequent kind of medical equipment, therefore the tentrode got its name from one of them. This is only a long tube that is flexible and thin designed to be inserted into the blood artery of a patient. Stents are generally put to use in a variety of medical operations, the majority of which are concerned with the heart. If you have an artery clogged or narrowed, the doctor will put a stent tube into the artery to keep it open for you. This will ensure that blood can flow through the artery and prevent a cardiac arrest from occurring. Therefore, the stent rod is exactly what it sounds like. It is a stent that has been coupled with a number of electrodes. During the synchron surgery, a stent is inserted with the use of a catheter into the patient's jugular vein. And then, the catheter is guided up to a blood artery located inside the motor cortex of the patient's brain. When the catheter tube is pulled back, the stentrode's open wire mesh will stretch outward and make contact with the side walls of the blood artery. Additionally, the wire that is attached to the other end of the stentrode is hooked into a very tiny computer device that would be implanted into the patient's chest cavity. If any of this seems at all similar, that's because putting in a pacemaker is almost precisely the same technique as what you are about to hear mentioned. They are just threading the wire through the skull into the brain rather than the heart. After that, the computer device implanted will use Bluetooth to interface with the rest of the system. This may be done by pairing the device with a computer or even simply a smartphone. One of the most appealing features is that the synchron operation would leave the patient with no foreign objects protruding from their body. They are unlikely to be able to reveal the fact that they have a device implanted in their brain in any way. Any location is suitable for using the system. In a matter of a few hours, experts may perform the operation in almost any medical environment. Most crucially, it is not necessary to crack open the patient's skull or cause injury to the tissue in the brain. A person who has amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS who is unable to move their body or perhaps even talk is the first patient in the United States to get stentro treatment. Because they have this synchron device, these individuals are now able to utilize a computer and converse through text just by thinking about what they want to type. The sole drawback of synchron is that it is merely located inside a blood artery that travels through the brain. This means that the electrode is not genuinely located within the cortical tissue and thus cannot interact with the neurons directly. As a result, the signal received by the stent root has a restricted bandwidth and cannot compete with that of the Utah RA. 
Therefore, although Synchron is undeniably effective at resolving numerous issues, the company is not yet capable of developing a comprehensive answer. This is where Neuralink enters the picture. Now, let's talk about the benefits that come with using Neuralink. Their connection device combines the most beneficial aspects of the classic Utah RA with the cutting-edge Stentrode, and they raise the capabilities to a significantly better level as a result. Therefore, similar to the Utah RA, the Neuralink procedure does need the extraction of part of the patient's skull material. Unfortunately, you'll need to have another hole drilled into your brain. But after that, rather than just inserting a little bed of nails into the brain, the Neuralink procedure employs a robotic sewing machine to precisely and correctly introduce exceedingly thin and flexible electrode strands into the outer cortical layer. These wires are only inserted a few millimeters. Going right to the source ensures the highest possible bandwidth, and each connected device will have around 1,000 of these microwires connected to it. In this manner, the robot will be able to implant the electrodes straight into the neuron that they require to read. Therefore, the quantity of signals emanating from the brain is staggering. The computer gadget coupled to the electrode wires is so tiny that it can fit precisely into the newly created hollow space in the skull and sit smoothly with the bone. This is made possible because the electrode wires are so thin. They may then wrap the skin back on and stitch patients up if they do it in this manner. After the hair regrows, no one would ever know that you had a computer implanted in your skull and linked into your brain because there wouldn't be any outward indication of it. In a manner similar to that of the Stentrode, the linking device would couple wirelessly through Bluetooth with a personal computer or a smartphone, which would then read the signals generated in the brain and convert them into orders for the computer. Therefore, in order to manage the implantation of the electrodes, the Stentrode makes use of a relatively common and tried-and-true medical method. On the other hand, the robotic brain surgery that Neuralink proposes has never been done before. Before, nobody attempted to stitch connections into a human brain using an automatic sewing machine. Because of this, it is probable that for Neuralink to receive the FDA's permission for human testing, they will need the company to provide a very comprehensive plan that has been tested extensively. It has come to our attention that Neuralink is now trying its technology on monkeys and pigs. We also know that the monkey has not always come out on top in situations like these. In many instances, the monkey subjected to surgery had already passed away before the procedure. Some were in such a critical state that they were put to sleep right after the operation. The deaths of those monkeys were predetermined and are an inevitable part of the testing process for any medical equipment. In other situations, some monkeys did pass away as a direct result of infections or issues directly connected to the Neuralink operation. Although this is unfortunate, it's how we learn something new regarding science and medicine. We test new ideas first on animals. Therefore, I would like to express my gratitude to the monkeys for the sacrifice that they made. I'm sure it would have been better for you if a brain implant trial didn't end in your death but be assured that your sacrifice won't be in vain. We don't really have a good idea of when Neuralink will start its own human testing since we don't have enough information. We know they are currently working on productive collaboration with the FDA on this matter. Elon has said that his organization is dedicated to not just fulfilling but also significantly outperforming each and every safety criterion that is associated with the experiment. Elon responded to the question by stating that he anticipates human Neuralink experiments to take place by the end of the year. He repeated the same thing the year before as well, and he is doing it once again this year. It is sure to happen that he is going to be proven right, similar to the circumstance when the clock is broken. Also, it's probably a good timing that this particular contemporary brain implant won't be the first one tested on humans. There is going to be at least one element that can be picked up from the synchron observation that can assist with the development of Neuralink. To reiterate, there is more than enough area in the business for numerous companies to exist simultaneously. It's not that Neuralink should simply give up since Synchron was more successful in the testing stage, and Synchron isn't worthless merely because it has a lower transmission connection. Both of these things are important to consider. They need as much assistance that they can receive as quickly as possible because sadly, there is a great deal of individuals around the world who have different types of brain injuries and diseases and need it as early as they possibly can obtain it. Therefore, the more BCI firms that do more testing in real-world settings, the better. We can only hope that this little introduction has made the field of brain-computer interfaces a little more accessible to you. There is indeed a bunch of really great technology available that will benefit a large number of people, and that's wonderful. Though again, RIP to the legendary monkeys.
Elon and Neuralink may be the loudest and flashiest, and they certainly get the most attention. However, there is a lot of other technology out there that will be striving to help so many people. At this point, I'm sure we can all recall a time when we tried to get a piece of technology but couldn't do so. Let's discuss it in the comment box below. What medical technology do you think would be the next one to be on the lead? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more weekly stuff like this and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And again, this is Technology Zone. See you guys in the next one.